Good evening and welcome to our longest night service. If you received fabric when we worshiped together in the parking lot, this is the time to take it out. If you weren't able to worship with us but would still like to participate, you can either find a piece of fabric at home or paper it would work as well. If you part feel like participating without tearing, that is just fine. Whatever you're most comfortable with as we worship together this evening. As we gather in the dark tonight, we recognize that darkness is often unsettling. We've been taught to fear it, to avoid it, to keep the lights on and, and think happy thoughts, to pretend everything's all right and to not go into the dark place. Yet God created light and dark, day and night, and said that both were good. To fear darkness is to miss what we can see there that we can't see clearly anywhere else. So here we are. We are in the dark. Tonight we're encouraged not to turn too quickly to the bright, shiny objects, to easy answers and well-lit rooms. This sacred darkening makes room for all of who we are, for our laments and longings, our confessions, our grief, and our cries. The darkness can help us see that we cannot see in the light. The dark and holy night can help perhaps even be a night where dreams are dreamed, hope can be born. Here we are. We are in the dark. And, and God, God is, is with, with us. us. We, we are, are not, not alone. alone. Tonight we will be participating in the long-standing biblical tradition of lament, the practice of mourning for all that's wrong and, and crying out to God and with God to make things right. One of the ways that people expressed their laments in the Bible was by rending, by tearing their clothes. In those days, clothing was valuable and a limited resource and not something that was easily replaced. So when they ripped their clothes to shreds, it spoke volumes. It was a way of physically expressing the pain that they felt inside, a way of saying, I am torn up. My heart is ripped to shreds. This is the sound of our sorrow as we wait and wait and wait for God and for what's broken to be made whole. We learn in Scripture that our prayers don't need to be neat. They don't have to be nice and we don't have to hold anything back. In this time of prayer, we'll also be inviting you to tear the cloth that you've been given as a way to help us all remember what's been lost, what's been ripped and torn this past year, and to help us to mourn the things in our lives and our world that can't be easily repaired or replaced. God, your dream was of a world that was safe and life-giving. So we cry out to you, for this has not been our reality, especially in the midst of this pandemic. We cry out for all the lives lost this year, those known to us and those unknown, from the people down the street 
to those across the world. We grieve as well the loss of even being able to grieve in the ways that we have before. We cry out because it's so easy to lose hope. At this time, you are invited to write down the laments for the lives lost this year on a piece of cloth or paper that is before you. Hear these words from Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you utterly forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I harbor sorrow in my soul, grief in my heart day after day? In the spirit of rending, you are invited to tear your cloth. God, you dream of a world where we can all be together in body and spirit to share meals and laughter and embraces. So we cry out to you because that has not been our reality this year. We weep for the loss of relationship, for the loss of routine and normalty and the ability to be physically together. We weep even for the loss of trust that the world is a safe good place. We are hurting and peace seems like a memory. You are invited now to write down your laments for the loss of things that we need, that we used to depend on, things that we could expect. from Jeremiah 8. No healing, only grief. My heart is broken. Listen to the weeping of my people all across the land. I invite you now to tear your cloth. O oh God, you dream of a world where there is mercy and kindness justice and joy, and enough to go around. So we weep tonight for all of the lives lost and hurt because of injustice and the fear of strangers and those who live or believe differently than we do. You're invited to write down your laments of the people or situations who are hurting today due to injustice, hatred, greed, or exclusion.
these words from Jeremiah 31. A voice heard in Raman, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. And now tear another strip of your cloth. Oh God, you dream of a world where wrongs are acknowledged and righted and restoration is possible. Tonight we cry out to you and confess that we have too often ignored the hurt in our country, our neighborhoods, and in our own hearts. It's hard to confront what's broken within us and around us and to find the courage to make things right. Hear our prayers and forgive us. You are invited to write down your confessions and prayers for forgiveness and change. Hear these words from Psalm 102. God, listen. Listen to my prayer. Listen to the pain in my cries. Don't turn your back on me. Just when I need you so desperately, pay attention. This is a cry for help. I invite you to tear another strip from your cloth. We will be gathering our ripped and torn hopes, our ragged laments, and tying them to the fence of our columbarium where they will hang as a reminder that our laments have become something else, a visual sign of God's unending love, a love that can't be canceled, a love that never fails. As we read in Romans 8, neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, as we wait through all our dark nights, we can remember God's immense and unfailing love for each of us and for the whole aching world, a love born in Christ, on Christmas. Let us pray. O oh God of big dreams, O oh God of big love, we look for you in the darkness of our despair, of our denial, of our disappointments. Even as we weep, we wait and hope and look toward Bethlehem. Help us whether we can see you clearly or not, to follow you and to live your dreams, your fierce, brave, life and joy-giving dreams, tonight and always. Amen. Go, trusting in the darkness, even now seeds are growing, hope is being born, and new dreams are being dreamed. Go in the brace of God, of pow God's powerful love the Christ of humanness and vulnerability, and the Spirit that is always, always with us and for us. Amen. This
so much sorrow here, so much shame and hurt and fear. And this grief feels like the ache is never ending. The night is long. It's time to dream fierce dreams Like Mary did Brave dreams Like Joseph did New dreams Like Jesus did Cause those who dream change everything Those who dream change It's time to dream fierce dreams Like Mary did Brave dreams Like Joseph did New dreams Like Jesus did Cause those who dream change everything Those who dream change It's time to live fish dreams